Hello Mudroomers! It is Carmen here and today we are going to do our glaze profile for the Stoneware Glaze Pink Opal. As with all of our Stoneware Glazes, Pink Opal is available in 16 ounce brushing pints in addition to 5 pound bags of dry material for dipping. Pink Opal is one of five other glazes in our Opal's Glaze line, which consists of numbers SW250 through SW255. So we have a handful of other colors in this glaze line, and they all are actually going to perform very similar to Pink Opal, aside from the fact that they have a different color. Pink Opal is both a food safe and dinnerware recommended product. In addition to that, it has a firing range from cone 5 up to cone 10. All of our samples that are on our labels and our website are fired to cone 6 on a white stoneware clay body. And so anything outside of that could cause a variation or reaction with your clay body. As you can see here, there's quite a difference um, when you get up to cone 10 versus cone uh, 5 and cone 6 here. Uh, before we go over our tile review though, I do want to go ahead and apply some glaze just to do an application sample. I think this is really helpful for people to see. So I'm just going to glaze this just like I did these tiles here. So one, two, and three coats. I'm going to use my RB144 fan here. Um, but if you do tend to be light-handed, or if you're glazing a larger piece, we do have a larger RB140 uh, number 8 fan. So these are really, really nice because they plump up and hold glaze very well. Uh, when you're applying glaze, you do want to think about it as like you're layering on materials rather than just covering the surface. So here's uh, the first coat. I've, my brush is nice and loaded up so you can see how uh, much glaze is in there. And I'm just going to be kind of pulling this glaze across the surface a little bit because we do have this texture here. But notice I never get, uh, my brush is never dragging. So it always goes across the surface really smoothly even if I am working this out of this texture here. Dragging is when you can kind of hear the brush moving or you get these little streaks. You never want to apply, even if you're doing these little short strokes, think about if you do a long stroke, if it's going to drag, then you need to have more glaze on your brush. So here's one coat. You can see it's still a little bit wet, so your first coat should be applied heavy enough that it's not drying instantly. And while that's drying, I'll go ahead and go over some of these tiles here. Uh, first, we'll kind of look at our standard tile. So this is 251 Fire to Cone 6. We've got one, two, and three coats. You can see it breaks really well over texture. And the color variation does build up when you get to three coats. So it does build in both opacity and variation here. Uh, if you look here, you can notice this is like the, the opal sort of effect. So this sort of modeling or white variation that happens here, that's kind of what we're referring to. And this is across the whole Opal's glaze line. So all of them, when they get to three coats, they build up in this way. And then on the back here, here is just three coats uh, without any texture or anything. So this glaze is pretty stable. It doesn't move very much, but it can add some mobility to combinations. So it does sag and break a little bit, but it's not a runner or anything like that. And then here we have it fired to cone five. Not way too big of a difference here. You can see a bit more of that modeling variation here. Just generally it melted a bit more at cone six, which definitely makes sense. And then here, so you can kind of see it's almost like cone six, this tight light color starts to spread out. So it's like the heat kind of melts it a little bit more enough to make this start moving. So here's cone five, cone six, and then here we have cone 10. So this is three coats uh, on the front of the tile here. And as you can see, the 
pink pigment completely uh, disappears at this high of a temperature, which is honestly super common for pinks and purples to not hold up at these hotter temperatures. Even some reds are like that too. So here we've got the cone 10 reduction. It breaks really well over texture. It is kind of this greenish clear color. But it doesn't start melting a bunch of cone 10 either, which is nice that that is reliable in that sense. And then here we'll go over our flux tile. Here I've applied two coats of flux underneath three coats of pink opal. So here's light flux and dark flux. You can see the light flux intermingles a little bit, but stays pretty bright. Sometimes it's more of a cream color, but here it, it's white. And then here we have this charcoal breaking as well as this blue sort of integration into here, which is really pretty. So this glaze does move a bit, but again, it's not running off the piece with the flux. So you can count on it. If you apply both really heavy, I think it would start running off, but I am a pretty heavy glazer. I have two coats of flux and three coats of uh, pink opal, and it stayed mostly on the piece. There is a little bit more movement with the flux over the pink opal and a little bit more interaction. So here it kind of just slip and slided all the glaze down here. You can see there's like no pink opal remaining here and it's all moved down here. Whereas here it integrated a bit more. And that's really common for the um, under versus over. So a lot of time with flux under, it'll kind of just roll all the glaze off of the where the flux was and it'll move down. That's not always the case, but um, it can be with some transparent glazes or glazes that are a little bit more stable. And then here we have a cone 10 reduction with the flux over. So again, the pink's totally not there, but we do have a little bit of integration or melting that happens here. All right, we'll go ahead and apply our second coat onto our tile here. Just load up that brush really well. You don't want it dragging. I like to make my line and then pull it away from there and not letting it pull too much in the texture here. So there we've got two coats. See, it's pretty, pretty thick on there. All right, and then here we have our alternative clay bodies. So we've got our white speckled, our brown speckled, and our dark brown. Okay. All of these are fired to cone six with a drop hold and a slow cool. This glaze pr plays really, pretty well with uh, different clay bodies. So all of that might not be necessary. That's just kind of our standard at this point. Um, but you might be able just to get away with a hold or maybe even depending on the clay body, not even do any special firing. But that's kind of what we recommend. If you do end up having trouble with your surface on a clay body, we recommend adding a hold or um, a slow cool. And then here we can talk about the glaze combinations. Here we have our Cenote over 251. It makes this beautiful pink purple with the melting. And these two glazes together do have some mobility. Pink opal doesn't necessarily always add mobility to a combination, but since Cenote does have some mobility as well, those did end up moving. Here we have uh, root beer with pink opal. So we've got two coats of root beer over two coats of pink opal fired to cone six. As you can see, there is a little bit of mobility and that's due to the fact that root beer is again kind of a a little bit mobile of a glaze. Not a runner necessarily, but it does have some movement. And then here we have Galaxy over Pink Opal. And this is really nice. The Pink Opal kind of turns this orangish color and the crystal's a little bit more pink, which makes these match really, really well. This is a very heavy crystal loading uh, for Galaxy. So if you look at here, this is kind of a little bit more of what you'll see if you have a more, <laughs> more reasonable uh, crystal loading there. And then here we have um, black walnut over pink opal. 
And black walnut often brings kind of like a green iridescence to a combination, so that's not super surprising. And this did have some mobility with it. So if this was layered with like a matte glaze or one of our gloss glazes, those wouldn't have probably any movement at all. So it's really gonna be depending on how heavy you apply the glaze and what glaze you're pairing it with as to how mobile a glaze will end up being. All right, and so here is our final coat. We do have a little bit of gloss here in the texture, but it's no big deal because we know it's already heavy there anyway since it's the textured area. And then so there's my third coat. And so this, when it's fired, will resemble this. So that's just three good coats for applying product. And I think that is all that I have today for Pink Opal. Um, the combo sheet is available on our website. We have cone six and cone 10 combinations available there. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to check out our Make a Mudroom Society on Facebook. It's a really great resource for potters to use to discuss our products and techniques with other potters as well as share your work. Uh, it's become a really, really nice community of people. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments or any, any um, critiques or anything like that. I love hearing from you guys just to help me uh, or help us teach you better. So thanks so much for tuning in today. And as always, make it Mako.